animals. They're animals, my mum said. I looked at her all naughty like. I said, Mum, because that's what I do when I'm mad with her. I said, Mum, animals are nice. They're fluffy and they're gentle and they just want to be loved. She banged the table with a flat fist like this, took a swig from a teacup and said, Well, they're worse than animals then. Of course, she was talking about that gang that did horrible things to my best mate, Max. They should be locked up, not the animals. You'd love Max if you met him. We've known each other since we were kids, next door neighbours, besties. We did everything together when we were younger. I always liked him because he was different. His mum said he had a disability, but I couldn't see it. He was just gentle and kind and funny. Oh, and he just loved animals. They were kind to him, you see, whereas people could sometimes be horrible because he was a bit different. Funnily enough, all the trouble started with animals. Max came running up to me one day. Tears were running down his cheeks and I thought, uh-oh, someone's been picking on him again. But I was completely wrong. I've got a job, he shouted, and he punched his fist in the air. And then his lip trembled and he said, two days a week in the pet shop. High five. I said, never mind, high five. Come here, you bugger. And I hugged him so hard. After his first week at the pet shop, I went to see him there. He was so excited, he could hardly get his words out. He just started reeling off everything they had in the pet shop. We've got rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, mice and rats. I said, hey, whoa, slow down, tiger. But he just carried on. And budgies, canaries, finches, cockatiels and rats. I said, that's twice you said rats. He clasped his hands together and went all shy. And then just quietly like, he goes, I love rats, I do. So, we're waiting for the bus home and these three scrotes come over, arms and legs everywhere, effing this and effing that, spitting all over the place. Proper nasties they were. One of them nudges Max and says, Hey mate, is that your missus? Max gets anxious and he starts gabbling all random like I'm Max Deacon, 29 Midland Road, OL10 4SY. I work in the pet shop over there and we've got rabbits, mice, guinea pigs and... He didn't get a chance to finish. They all started laughing and making jeering noises. The mouthy one sucks the snot from his nose into his mouth and spits this green slime all over the bus stop window. And then they walk off and he shouts at Max things like weirdo and numpty and they all make these rude gestures with their hands. Well, the less said about that, the better. Max looks upset. I wanted to tell them about the rats, he said. The next week, the scrotes are all at the bus stop again, pushing and shoving each other and making a right commotion till this stray Alsatian dog comes over barking and growling, and he corners the mouthy one. Uh, he's not so mouthy now, nearly had to change his underpants. Anyway, Max sees this, and he puts out his hand to the dog, strokes it, and it goes all calm and licks Max's face. He just wants a friend, Max says. Mouthy one gets up and stands behind his mates for safety. All right, numpty, he says. He just wants a friend, does he? What about you? Do you want a friend? It will be your friend, won't we, guys? The scrotes make this cackling noise and just go, Yeah, yeah, Numpty, you can be our friend. You'd like that, wouldn't you? You see, Max just thinks everyone's as honest as he is. So he says, Yeah, let's all be mates, eh? Well, it wasn't long before these so-called mates were asking Max to steal money from the pet shop so they could spend it on booze and whatnot. They'd arranged to meet Max after work. Did you bring the cash, numpty? The mouthy one says. No, says Max. If I take the money, the boss won't be able to buy food for the animals. And I love the animals. Anyway, it's wrong. Mouthy one gets mad and he punches the glass at the bus stop window, making it shatter. All right, numpty, he says. We are going to play a little game. It's called Bitch. What do we have to do, says Max. Get on your hands and knees, Numpty, and I'll show you, says Mouthy One, 
as he pulls a studded dog collar and a lead out of his pocket and puts it round Max's neck. Now, Numpty, you can be our bitch. Fancy a bite to eat? One of the other scrotes pulls out a pouch of dog food and forces Max to eat it. I don't know what it was that made me go around to see Max at the shop just at that moment. Animal instincts, you might say. I flew at them like a whirling dervish and they all scattered. When Max had stopped sobbing and I'd calmed down a bit, we called the police. Because, you see, what they were doing was a crime. They call it a hate crime. When people are horrible to someone just because they're different in some way, that's a crime. It felt kind of good when we saw them being taken away in a police car and Max got to tell the judge how they'd made him feel. I got a letter from Max today. He's now working on a pig farm out in the countryside. He says he loves pigs almost as much as rats. Oh, and there's something else he loves. He's got a girlfriend. She's called Mimi and he met her in the cafe at the farm. They sound good together, don't they? Max and Mimi. <laughs> oh, and he says that I should tell everybody I know not to put up with anybody being horrible to you because you might be different to them. If they call you names, ask you to steal or take your things or, or if they do horrible things like they did to Max, just tell the police. Tell them it's a hate crime and you're not going to put up with it. Max says, let's look after each other and be kind to animals. I like that. Do you?